Hello, and welcome to Talk of the Town Centre, a show about achieving personal enlightenment, achieving fabulous wealth, mainly just about chatting and TV and stuff like that. I'm Benedict Townsend. And I am Hannah Townsend. Hello, Hannah. How are you? <laughs> I thought we were going to go, and this is Talk of the Townsend. Uh, and this <laughs> is Talk, Talk of the, the Townsend. Uh, I put out on socials, I said, guys, which studio did you prefer? Was it Studio One mm-hmm. with the super bright lights? Was it Studio Two? And there was an overwhelming... Uh, majority vote for studio number two. People loved the shipping container. They did. And then we said, surprise. Studio three. St- it's going to be studio three. So if it sounds like we're in a different environment on the podcast, it's because we are. A cosier environment. A cosier environment. We're always good at referencing what things look like for a for a audio uh, visual. Yes. We <laughs> An want audio a, medium. A treat for the imagination. Exactly. So Hannah, what's new with you? Well, we uh, saw a celeb the other day. We did. <laughs> But I can't remember who, so fill me in. <laughs> oh, you'll remember. So we were in uh, Battersea Power Station. Yes. Shopping. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember now. And I just lost my mind. So we were in a shoe shop and um, I saw Harry from The Traitors. Traitors UK. We're big TV fans, as you guys know. Um, love that medium. <laughs> love that medium. Yeah. And I, for, I, I, I hit you and I went, that's Harry from the Traders. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's, let's get every gory detail. You were trying on shoes. He was about two feet away from us. You nudged me and went, traitors, like that. <laughs> and even that in my head, I thought, that's a bit much. He's going to hear. I went, traitors. <laughs> and then you looked at him and you when, yelled. It was like my, I just switched off and just like, I don't, I just don't know what happened. It was like I was at a concert and yeah. I'd seen Harry Styles and I screamed. You just went, Harry! Like that. And like this, he was my mate as well. He, This poor man jumped out of his skin. He's in the army and you managed to spook him. I, he was terrified for his life. I, when, like, we need to understand, like, the sound volume. It was so loud. It genuinely, it we're not exaggerating. It just kind of came things. out and I just screamed. I went, hurry. And he went, and he was like, oh, you're all right. And I was looking at you because you said it with such confidence and such familiarity <laughs> that I convinced myself in that moment. I was like, oh, she must have met and befriended Never. Harry from the Traitors at some moment that I'm not aware of. Because you said it as like, like you would say to your best mate of like, hey, Harry, how are you? Yeah. And he gave you this look of like, hi. And he thought he'd met me because of the way that think? I said it. Okay. I think so. I think the confidence of me acting like we were best mates. He was like, maybe I have met this woman. It was kind of a 3D chess thing you were playing there. <laughs> you kind of inceptioned him into thinking that you were mates. And then he, to be his credit, he came over and he's very nice. So nice. He shook my hand. I came out of it looking very normal and cool because I was just like, hello, mate. Like I the was show. like, we love the show. We love the show so much. And then obviously he left. Very, very nice guy. He left and you were like, that was a bit much. He left I, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, he I, ran away. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? Because yeah, that's the thing. You, I said to you, I was like, that was a bit much. And you were like, yeah, it wasn't. And I was like, really? Uh, yeah. You were convinced that that was a totally normal and interaction. Then about 30 seconds later, it kind of hit me and I was like, that was so weird. Like, also, like, we're very lucky. We've been to lots of events. We've been lucky enough to meet people who've been on telly or, like, influencers. And I just, I've never had anything like that where I've just, like, lost my mind. It's that thing that I think happens where you see someone on TV or whatever and because you've seen them so much, you think you know them. I felt like he was my mate. It was so funny, though, watching the shadow fall over your face after about a minute where you were like, like it was an out of body experience and you just woken up and you were like, did I really do that? And you, for the rest of the day, you kept on going, <laughs> yeah. like I'd done it. And I was like, There's this why one did I do that? From one of the Harry Potter trailers where he goes, Harry! and I kept just thinking in my head, that's what. Harry, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. So I'm sure he'll be a guest on the show soon. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of reality TV, actually, that's quite a good sagu onto something. So I don't know if we've spoken about Australian Traders season two on the podcast previously. It sounds like we're gonna. Well, we're gonna talk about it a little <laughs> bit, which is, it, first of all, it's nuts. It is worth watching. Yeah. Because it's one of the most bizarre seasons of television ever made. But long story short, one of the traitors is this guy, Sam, who is like psycho, who is just like so mean, right? Yeah. And we were watching it and it brought us to one of our favorite topics, which is people who are on TV who are not aware that you're on TV. Yeah. That you are being filmed. Yeah. I think there was this period where people were like hyper aware that they were on television. Yeah. Only a couple of years ago. And it's almost like, you know, maybe when the kind of Love Island first started, people didn't realise as much. And then people got very hyper aware. And then they were very cautious and everything Mm. was like quite guarded um, about what they kind of would say. And then 
it's kind of, we've gone back in time, like Sharon Osbourne and Louis Walsh yeah. on this series of Celebrity Big Brother just seemed to have no idea that they were on telly or had no media training yeah. of how you speak about people and how that will come across. It was nuts. I kind of love it. No, I kind of love it. I mean, to be <laughs> clear, I mean, this is probably obvious to the audience, like they know they're being filmed. We mean in the sense oh, sure. that you're being filmed, people are going to see this, you're going to look really bad. Yeah. I mean, maybe Sharon and Louis have reached a point in their career where they're like, screw it, I'm already rich. Like they were probably paid on the contingency of like go in there and stir things up a bit, which yeah. they did. It was good for the show. The tea. But yeah, especially when it's a show like Traitors where they're taking normal people off the street. Yeah. And putting cameras in front of them. It's like, do you want to maybe be a bit less of a dick? <laughs> Naked Attraction. Naked Attraction's one that's had a bit of a... There could be a bit of a mean streak in that. Yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. explain Naked Attraction to people who've never seen it? I feel like this would kill an American if they knew this show existed. So Naked Attraction is a dating show based purely on, I guess, the body? Yeah. Is that what it is? It, based purely on looks. It's like, can you be attracted to someone's naked body and then have form a connection afterwards? Yeah. Uh, and it used to be really nice. Uh, the It used to be very, like, body positive. They literally get someone in and show them five naked bodies. Yeah. One step at a time. Like, da, 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 they, like, raise a thing up and reveal each part of the naked body step by step. It's actually nuts to watch. Yeah. And the point of the show, like, Anna, the host, who seems like a nice character, the whole point of the show is meant to be about body positivity. At first, people were like, yeah, they seem great, whatever. Now, people these days are just like, their legs are bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, in, I mean, I guess the question is, is, People prior were like, I think that the way they are standing is not that confident. And you were like, Is that the reason you're kicking them the off? Is that the reason? I guess now it's a lot more honest, but in a way that's like, you can still be honest, but kind. Yes. But now it's like, this person is just like, that figure is just horrible to me, basically. Or the ones where, also, it's a naked person in front of you. They are so yeah. exposed. You don't want to be a little bit. There's ones where, people will be like, his penis is simply too small and then they'll get kicked off the show. And it's like, you just ruined that person's... That's the most devastating thing. I know. That's a common nightmare. I feel like the funnest game with Naked Attraction is seeing someone naked and then the reveal of, one, what clothes they will be wearing because mm. it's always the wildest card. Like, you can never pick how this person will be dressed. Once and a person's kicked off the show, it shows them clothes. They kind of spin and it's, then they're in clothes. Yeah, and it's always a crazy outfit. And then number two is also, like, the pose that they'll do. Yeah. I It, it must be hard when they're like, do a pose as you turn around, but my God, like, <laughs> they're always so embarrassing. You've just been kicked off Naked Attraction. Yeah. What's your pose? I think I just do... Like a... Like a hip-hop. Like a hip-hop. I wouldn't do too much with the arms. Yeah, sometimes people are like, doing all crazy, like... No. I think I would do the same. Just yeah. a little... <laughs> It'd be me in my, like, fedora. <laughs> one of those t-shirts that has a tuxedo on it. Nothing nice. on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Crocs, and then I'd just be like... You'd have a t-shirt with, like, the, a ripped six-pack on it. Yeah, be like, yeah, I'm yeah. still naked. Yeah, committing gotcha. to the bit. Other updates in our life? Yep. I've uh, connected you with my period tracking app oh yes flow <laughs> i've gone with the flow flow is an app that tracks periods but for some reason has a function where your partner can also log in on their own phone yeah. and get updates i it is a nice idea i guess yeah i think yeah. so i think it's a i think it's a good idea but flow is the like best comedy app yes that's not meant to be a comedy app and like don't get me wrong i feel like it is hard to reinvent the wheel of like today you're gonna feel like crap yeah because you're on your period but the things that they come up with. How much do you regret getting me on Flow? Because I love checking in every day. All the time. If I'm you, a little bit like moody or something, you will very like animatedly get your phone out and be like, let's see what the app says. I'm just getting, I'm getting the thing up because I took a screenshot of the greatest ever Flow message I ever got. Also, I love, it seems like every single day Flow is like, she may have tender breasts. Every day I've got tender breasts. It's never like... <laughs> It's never like tit, tits are feeling strong today. <laughs> it's like they're tender every day. You get your phone out and you go, those breasts are tender today. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. <laughs> this is the greatest ever message we've got from your period tracker app, right? The app gives me updates on how you might be feeling <laughs> so that I may best assist you in your time of need, right? This is March 27, cycle day 30. <laughs> it says, today's potential positive, because sometimes there's positives yeah. from being on your cycle. Easy navigation. 
she might find it easier to read maps before her period. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. And you took that and you ran with it the oh whole day. Oh my god. Day. That was a whole day that of material. That was a whole day of material of you uh getting up certain maps, uh just turning to me and going, "Where are we?" <laughs> the things that Flo comes up with. It also said like she might be eagle-eyed today. Her vision yes. might be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her, I'm like her vision might be clearer. And I, all <laughs> all of that day I was like, what does that say over there, eagle eye? <laughs> But I, I know for a fact that if you're ever, you know, with a, you know, every day you've got a map out. We all use maps Always. every day. If ever the A to Z, if you will. The A to Z, yes. If you've ever got a map out and you're a bit like, you know, like this, I'm like, oh, she's on a period. PMS, PMS, A to Z. PMS, post map. <laughs> Sightings. Po poor map site. Oh, That's what PMS stands that for. That is. Poor map site. That's officially in the app. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out to Flo. Yeah. But every single day, it's tender breasts. We, oh, my God. Should let's do let's it. Let's do a live Maybe flow. Maybe every week now we'll start with, <laughs> where is Hannah on her cycle? And it's like, I was going to say they would, they would sponsor us. Would they? I don't know. Sure. Should we find out about Hannah today? Today's potential positive. More energy. Your partner might perk up and want to do more around now. Do you feel energetic? I feel pretty, pretty good. Good. Today's tender. potential challenged. Tender. She may be more sensitive to sounds at this time <laughs> in her cycle. Heightened hearing, it says. <laughs> like it's a sort of badger in a cave. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, I know every five seconds in this podcast, you're like, ah, <laughs> like a bat. You turn back and I'm wearing those over the head, over the head headphones yeah. just to block out the sound. Um, what, what I like is that when it tells me that info, it also says what you can do. So what you can do, turn it down. <laughs> Adjust the sound on your phone, TV and speakers. Sure. So I'll make sure to take stuff down. Thanks. But I mean, your map reading ability, I guess, is average today. Oh. No word on the breasts, tender or otherwise. <laughs> that just, it's a baseline, always tender and less told otherwise. Yes. If in doubt. Always tender. Something came back to me recently. Uh, I almost jolted awake in a cold sweat. Yeah. Of a memory of these events I used to go to when I was like 14, <laughs> which I think you used to go to as well. And I don't know if they exist anymore, but they were basically like club nights. Yeah. With no alcohol yeah. for children uh -huh. that were in London. And he used to get them advertised on Facebook. Remember Facebook? Which was once a very popular social media site. And you have these big groups. And they were called stuff like Under the Radar. Let's Go Crazy. Let's Go Crazy. You said it, there was like foam party ones. Yeah, I think I went to a Let's Go Crazy foam party. And I, I remember think. I went to one and uh, Mr. Hudson was there. Who's that? He was the one who did that song Supernova. Champagne supernova. No, with and it feel like taking off. Oh. Let me be a supernova. Um anyway. <laughs> Please. He was pretty big at the time and he played Let's Go Crazy. Uh -huh. But the events were so strange. I remember you get all dressed up, you go into town, you wouldn't drink or anything. I remember well, Yeah. Yeah. But I remember there would <laughs> always be like a group of guys in their twenties who were just inexplicably at the event. I I don't recall that. Really, maybe you weren't cool enough to be hanging with the grown-ups like me. I think I was too lost in the foam. In the foam. <laughs> but do they still do those? They must do. Because they must make money. Because it's like, what do kids do at that age? I guess the cool kids were probably in a park drinking, but me and you were at a foam party. Hell yeah. But it felt cool. <laughs> it did it was, feel cool. At the time, it was considered cool to go crazy. I Let's. Let's. <laughs> I think I wore a tutu and I went to one and I'm pretty sure a tutu. someone from some sort of like show was there, like a diversity, like a group, like a, yeah, like a dance troupe or something. Oh, some like X Factor person. Yeah, there was someone and we got like our photos taken with them. Oh, they were like a featured guest. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't just like, this no, is they the were cool place pull. to hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were like a, a draw in, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if they're still going on. I wonder if the kids are at Let's Go Crazy. Because Gen Z apparently don't, drink really yeah. they drink far less than us mainly probably because everything's so expensive yeah don't know what gen alpha how old are gen alpha now like 10 12 do you think they are they're on the hard stuff well they're probably just locked into those ipads they yeah. probably don't you know maybe they're all on maybe some, there's like a virtual like a virtual let's go crazy on like roblox or something or like Fortnite. <laughs> probably probably honestly probably yeah they're not cool like us. They're not cool like us. Anyway, if anyone's still going to, if anyone is 14 listening and still goes to Let's Go Crazy, let us know in the podcast comments. Yeah. What did you wear to it? Uh, I think, yeah, tutu as well, mainly. <laughs> I wore a shirt with um, a six pack on it, fedora, <laughs> nothing on the bottom, and then Crocs. 
what's burned in my brain is those like top man uh t-shirts with the like piping with the pipe i was gonna the... say i did wear that did i'm pretty you? sure yeah i think it was like purple with like neon green Awful. piping and the buttons the buttons the buttons are a key feature height as possible yeah of course and then like the tightest possible like skinny jeans yeah that was the look i don't know what shoes i guess like converse like colorful converse oh wow do you think that style will ever come back i don't think the piping no no like 2008 core I, I i personally don't think that's coming back anytime soon i feel like most of my old facebook photos of me in the piping shirt you also loved a fake sleeve which really makes that was me no laugh. hold on that's when i was a little boy you did love a fake sleeve like a t-shirt and as if you were wearing something under it and every time i see those photos i'm like but you know that was the style <laughs> in like the 90s to wear a long sleeve shirt with a t-shirt over it but that's so inefficient. <laughs> Why not buy one where it's built in? There's a photo on my on my official website. It's a photo of me in one of those yeah. standing next to a laptop. You it's love cool the look. fake sleeve. I love a fake sleeve. I can't remember if we've spoken about this in the podcast. Um, your New Year's resolution yeah. this year, I think, or last year, yeah. was really good. Oh, God. Which was you wanted to make one really good new friend. It's early in the year. <laughs> I'm not testing you on whether you've done it. I just think that's a good New Year's resolution. Yeah, I think every year I think it's pretty good to try and like lock in one really, you know, quite solid friendship. Yeah. Uh, because I can't overcommit to like lots of friends at this age. I went through this period where I was like just like meeting up with like loads of new people often and like going for dinners and like going for drinks. And it's like I didn't I just don't have the capacity to like. Yeah harvest those friendships and keep them going so it's almost worse to like go out for one amazing dinner and then someone being like shall we keep meeting up and it's like kind of no yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, genuinely like because you can't because you don't wanna, you, you can't do it justice a you lot feel. of exactly and a lot of my other friendships are in groups so mm. when i hang out i'm with lots of people you can tick a load off in one go then i just kept meeting people who were wonderful amazing people but like and we had great connections and i and i did want to follow those friendships but it was just like realistically, I, I and maybe it was the same for them too. Of like, we just both probably don't have the time. And you're not blowing these people off. You're not making enemies no. of them. But you're more just keeping them as like good acquaintance. Yeah, because it's like we can't pass in the realm to like best friends who like would need to lock in like dinner and drinks or a couple of social occasions every month because it's just like that's just not feasible at this age. So one good friend. It, the, the position's still up for the taking, to be honest, because mm. I haven't decided on who it'll be. Um, it'll just be one. The one rest lucky will be, winner out there. The we'll rest get, will be tossed aside. We'll get to be my mate. But do you think that's... I, it must be partially an age thing. Because yeah. I feel like I barely have time to see, like, yeah, the my people old that, yeah, friends. Yeah, of course. Like, my 100-year-old friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it must be an, an age thing. But also, I think it is a real London <laughs> thing. I've seen so many videos from people who lived in London and moved away or whatever, that like it is really hard to see people in London because London's really big. Everyone's yeah. really busy. Sure. There's such a big pace of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even like my really good friends, if they live in like North London, it's like, That's... well, I guess I just won't see them then. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll just catch up with you on socials. Guess I'll die. <laughs> guess I'll just stay at home with my map reading wife. <laughs> hey. 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 Sometimes you... That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard that from a mile away. Although we did meet up with friends the other day and we did we went on a wonderful walk with them. Yep. And a memory came up uh, when we were with them, which I've been thinking about nonstop ever since. And it's uh, when my grandma died. Okay, good, strong start. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I hope you'd remember that. <laughs> I hope you... Where is she? <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, so my grandma died and we had her wake. Uh, oh, no, it's this story. All right. <laughs> yes. So my grandma died and we had her wake mm -hmm. um, and her wake was at her house and it's quite a small house. So we were kind of all in the front room. Mm -hmm. We were, I guess, semi early on into dating. Um, so you didn't know my family that well. Were we married? No, we weren't married. I don't think we were. No. Someone came round at said wake and was like, all of this stuff will either be sold or donated. So if anyone wants anything. Yeah. Um, any of the furniture. Any of the furniture or anything, you can take it. So. Everyone's in this room, you know, everyone's very upset because my grandma has died. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like talking to family Probably members. Probably not bar, in the bar. ground yet at this point. Honestly, still not in the ground. Yeah. I'm talking to my family members and I look over and I see you. And <laughs> you've got, I think my cousin's holding up this TV. You're trying to get 
you're trying to get this. Was it a sound? It was a sound bar. It was a Bose sound bar. Your grandma had a very nice <laughs> Bose sound bar on her TV. I think because she was hard of hearing in her later years. So she actually had a really sick sound no, bar. she was blind. Okay. <laughs> well, then sound was extra important to her. The point like is, me during like, this you, time. like you during this difficult time. She had a very nice soundbar. I will say, look, when the announcement was made that everything's up for grabs, everyone was very sad, but everyone did go a bit like, hmm. <laughs> hmm. A quick check around the room. I wasn't the only one. Your, I remember your dad with two chairs under his arms but walking out to the left. car. This was like early on in the wake. And you were like, unfortunately, you caused such a commotion. <laughs> everyone at this wake turned and was looking at you. And you're like, um, it was plugged in at like eight different points. So you yeah. were like unplugging all these cables and like trying to get the soundbar off. And literally my grandma's not even in the ground. I was trying to do it respectfully as well. I was like, it's very sorry, very sorry. <laughs> yeah. The scar, take the scar lead out. Very sorry for your loss. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Have we got the remote? <laughs> it, yeah, you kept on asking everyone. Has anyone seen, you're holding this like massive It was Bose huge as well. <laughs> it was like, most soundbars are bars. This was like a box. It was huge. It was so big. You caused such a commotion. You got it though, didn't you? And I? I was like, yes, this is my new boyfriend, Ben. <laughs> the thief. <laughs> the thief. You got this massive soundbar. That yeah. that image is burned into my brain. She'd want me to have it. She'd want, she'd want you to hear. This is something I was thinking the other day, and I don't know if this is too dark. But I was reading some stuff on Twitter about how there's an interesting phenomenon at the moment about the older or oldest generation who have a lot of stuff they've collected over the years, like DVDs? fine, like well, yes, but like fine china and stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> and how they're trying to leave it to their kids, who I guess are like millennials, and none of them want it. We don't have the space because we don't because we simply don't have the space because a lot Sorry, of people I keep jumping in front. No, of you. no, no. Yeah. But you're right because we don't have the space because people don't have property or if yeah. they do, it's very small. Or they simply don't want, you know, fancy plates for when the Queen comes round. And apparently there's also a, another a tweet I saw, which is that there's been a, a flood of classic cars hitting the market as well. Because I think older people who had the money to collect classic cars are now just selling them. Yeah. But again, no one's buying them because... Well, it's because the upkeep, isn't it? The upkeep. And also, I guess they want, you know, life's a bit more expensive. They're like, I need a bit of cash. I'll sell some of my classic cars. You know how it is. Um but again, no one's buying them because millennials have not got money for rent, let no. alone I'm going to buy a Corvette. You know what I mean? <laughs> so first of all, that's interesting to me. But also it just kind of affirmed to me that slightly depressing thing of like, when you die, your stuff is just gone. Yeah. Like people spend their whole lives collecting all this stuff. And then when you're gone, your family will take some of it. And then the rest is either just put in the dump yeah, or is just given to charity. And you see it with celebrities. They'll do like estate auctions. Yeah, yeah. Where like like Roger Moore, when he died, they just auctioned off all his stuff. And he had like crazy stuff. He had like, you know, scripts and whatever. But like, you know, he spent his life collecting this stuff. And then it just, it was just, it gone. just gets given away. And so like, this isn't particularly en entertaining, but it's just interesting. It's like a reminder of like, life's pretty fleeting. You can't, you know, yeah. you can't be obsessed with stuff. You should collect cold hard cash because that... That stays. That's what I'm trying. Grandma, if you're listening. Ultimately, that's what I'm trying to say. If Collect you spend your life collecting soundbars, bastards like me will come along and take them. But cold hard cash, or or if not, Bitcoin. And that brings us to this week's sponsor. Do you know what? Um, I was uh, engaged with the state stale uh, TikToks, you know, where they go, where people, because in oh, America. A state talk. Yeah. <laughs> in America, estate sales are a lot bigger or people mm. just like will leave loads of people's stuff outside on the street. I've seen that and people go and they like take oh, yeah, their stuff. Oh, they just spread it out on the lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Or like even in New York, I've seen ones just like outside apartments. It's like, this is everything this person owned. Yeah. Who wants? But we don't really do that here. Hey, I'm a state sale in here. I left that fun thing, that fun kids game outside that had like never been used. Didn't go for days outside our house. No one wanted it. Our, I will say, our, outside our house is quite good. Yeah. Like, you can leave, I mean, we don't leave like crap in the street, but if you leave anything out there, like a chair, yeah. it's gone in seconds. Yeah, Someone yeah. must have scouted that our patch of pavement is a good place to get stuff. Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round by us, people leave a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, but it goes. We were having a dinner party and then I we need we didn't have enough chairs to seat everyone. And then I was just walking past and there was like loads of chairs. And I just took them. Yeah. I just went inside the house and I just took these chairs and then the the person who was in the moving van was like <laughs> finally our new house now wait mike i just left those chairs here have you seen them those were my grandma's chairs <laughs> she's not even in the ground all right on that note that brings us to the end of this episode of talk the townsends thank you so much for tuning in wherever it is you tune in you can find us on podcast platforms tiktok youtube probably all over yeah. i'm benedict townsend and i'm hannah townsend and hannah leave us with our famous catchphrase consistency is key
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking because we're so inconsistent with like where the podcast is, how frequently it comes out. True. You've got to start doing that catchphrase every week though. Otherwise you're going to be <laughs> a hypocrite. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey.